Good morning, guys. Okay, so um, before I get into your periods, um, six and seven review, um, every day that more people are taking AP exams, College Board is having more things to say about students who are encountering problems. So I want to make sure that I go over a couple of those things with you. Um, let me flip back to them. Okay. The biggest problem that it looks like people have been having um, is their browser is not completely updated. You can only have um, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or Edge. They don't support uh, Internet Explorer, so you can't use Internet Explorer um, and take your exam. Um, on top of that, whatever browser it is that you're using, you have to you have to make sure that you are using the most updated version um, because if you're using an outdated version then when you go to like maybe copy and paste your ex exam question or your response if you're putting it in a different box it's not going to format properly and it might not even um, like I saw videos of people clicking to upload and it just wasn't uploading um, and now those people have to take the test a second time <laughs> so um, and I know that as, as long as you can avoid taking the test a second time I'm sure that's what all of you want um, the other things I'm seeing they have is if you can't find your APID number, they emailed you this information um, or they will email you this information a few days before your um, your test. So your e-ticket, since you guys' test is on Friday, you should get your ticket today if you haven't gotten it already. Um, and your um, APID is on that email with your ticket to take the exam. Um, on the personal information page, you have to fill out every question in order to move forward. So if you can't move forward, that's why. Um, a lot of people have been having a not great of a time trying to submit their responses on an iPhone and I don't mean like they took a picture of their test and then uploaded it that's going fine but people who are typing their answers on their phone and doing the, the whole exam on their phone it's not going great um, so I definitely I said this you know back when we first learned that all of this was going to be online you're going to want to do it on a computer so make sure that um, that you do that you can always um, you know type your um, what's the, what's the, what am I looking at? You can always have like two, uh, tabs open, one tab to look at the documents and one tab to look at, um, your answer, not on the test, but you can like the, and where you type your answer, you can type it in Google docs or something that's automatically saving. Um, but you have to make sure that it's formatted right. Whenever you copy and paste it into the exam submission box. Um, let me see if there's anything else on this list. A college board uploaded that I feel like is worth mentioning. Do not hit refresh or go back while your exam is in progress unless you get a specific message telling you to do so. Um, if you accidentally do that or if you're, you close your browser or if your device crashes or if you lose your internet, then you will uh, need to do a makeup exam. Um, Okay, I think that's it. That's everything that I see on that list that's like worth mentioning. Um, I know that a lot of you feel like you type faster on your phone, but I wouldn't risk it. I really wouldn't. Um, what you, yeah, you don't want to have to do this two times and then end up having to type it on your, um, on your uh, computer anyway. I guess you, in theory, you could um, type it if you have the Google Docs app on your phone. You could type it on your phone and then on your computer open up google docs and copy and paste it over that might be the best method if you really are insisting on typing faster on your phone um that might be the move but what i don't i think the reason why people are having problems with their phone is because they're trying to do the exam they're like accessing the exam from their phone and that's not going very well um so maybe if you really need to type it out on your phone then do it in a, in a Google Doc because it'll automatically save. Just type it here and then open the Google Doc, doc up on your computer and um, copy and paste it over. That's the best I can think of. Um, but uh, for sure, if you're not a fast typer, you know, get some extra typing in um, over the next couple of days. Um, I've started looking at your... Um, uh, conservatism DBQs. So I will, um, if you haven't gotten feedback for that yet, you will. I'll do it the same way I did it this last time. I'm not going to upload the rubric because instead it didn't really work. I'll just keep typing in it like 
I gave you the point for this, for this, for this, not for this. Here's what you need to fix. Um, definitely so far we're doing well and I'm feeling optimistic, honestly. Um, because, and re- but keep in mind, we don't know what passing is. We can assume that maybe a five is passing, uh, but we don't know every, we don't know the, the curve and we won't know until after the exam has already been taken. Um, so it's very possible that getting a five is actually a four or is actually a two. It's hard to say. Um, at this point, I'm assuming that like fives and sixes are three, seven, eight is a four, nine, 10 is a five, but that's on the like thought process that a lot of people do really well and this could be harder. Kids could do worse. And because of that, they'll gr- the grading scale will be a little easier. So like I said, I don't know. Caleb says on all the assignments on here, I minimize the question, answer the pages on half my screen so I can see both. Yeah, that's, that's definitely what I recommend. That's kind of how I grade your exam. I, I have the, I have both of them up uh, so that I can see the questions so that when you talk about a document, I can remember what it is. And because at this point I have the rubric memorized now, so I don't quite need to look at it as much, but, um, but I, so that I am seeing both at the same time. So that's definitely helpful. Um, and you could do that. You could have the documents there and you could have the uh, rubric there and then type it on your phone. I know you've already said this, but are you going to tell us the score you think we got? Um, I want to do that. Um, I have had talked to some other teachers who've said that they don't want to do that because they don't want any parents calling them upset if they don't. It, like if you don't get the score that we said you got. Um, but I, I mean, I, I, you guys know as well as I do the human error in this AP grading and it's the same across the board. Like I could, I could give you a point for your thesis and they might not like it and they might not give you a point or, or I might not give you a point and they might give you a point. So it's really subjective, but I definitely can. I'll look over them after I get them and give you a Here's what I think. I might even say like your thesis was wonky. They might give you a point for that. They might not. But even with or without that, here's the um, here's the deal. And remember, every point really matters. Um, honestly, if there's any point that you can get, try it because just the difference in one point can move you from a three to a four or from a two to a three. Um, That's definitely something I I saw last year a lot. Um, I know it's different because your exam is different this year, but definitely if there's a point you can get, try it. Here I am once again, getting distracted by all these messages. I will not allow it to get me today. Okay. Um, If there's any other questions about the formatting or anything of the exam, you know, just let me know. Um, um, and I think I thought AP Euro was yesterday, but actually I think it's today. But um, as more, like I said, as more tests keep happening and I, if I keep seeing other um, AP teachers, um, I'll let you know. Should we write our DBQs like the other DBQs in the past? If you're talking about formatting, yes. Um most people did that on their um, on their practice ones that we've been doing. You, the formatting should still be the same. Context, thesis, body, body, magic, close. Um, if you have a formula that works, go for it. Um, the literally the only difference is that you you should be working for two outside evidence points instead of one. That's the main difference. Um, And honestly, that's a lot better because that's one thing that you actually can get with content. Like there are actually a couple of points you can get with content uh, outside evidence points. Um, So and remember, I've I had to tell several of you this in your uh, feedback on your um, DBQ. Outside evidence is not a phrase for reference. You can, a couple of people attempted on the Vietnam one, a couple of people attempted um, outside evidence by like referencing Kent State, but they didn't explain it and they didn't say how it fit their thesis. So you don't get the point. Um, remember, you, if it's outside evidence, you, you have to show it supports your thesis the same way you would show a document supports your, your uh, thesis. Just go to the rubric. Exactly. That's what I've been saying. Literally have the rubric in front of you make sure you do everything that's on the rubric, um, you know, go through it all. Um, but I will say, like I said yesterday, you don't need to do more than what the rubric is asking. You don't need to 
describe all five documents. That is truly a waste of your time. And you're going to wind up with like a four page essay and any reader is going to be hyper annoyed if you give them a four page essay to read. Um, it's just not as typed four pages, handwritten fine, but four pages typed you're doing something. And also I don't even see how that's possible in 45 minutes. Um, so make sure that you like, if you want to do one extra for like a safety net on anything, totally get that. If you want to give them three outside evidences instead of two, whatever. Um, but you have to use four, use a four. You don't have to use all five. Five is for your safety net. Just like how on the old one, you only had to use six, but seven's the safety net. Use all five. Um, because if you, because I had several people who used all five, didn't use one correctly, but they still got the two points because they used the fifth as a safety net. So, and you, so you get one point for describing it, two points for support and two points for um, explaining the like author purpose, blah, 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 blah. On the last exam, I use all of them. Yes, that's good. Use all the documents. You just don't need to summarize in detail the content of all the documents. Just two. Just two. So um, three if you want to be extra cautious. Um, I think I, might, I think that's all the questions. I want to make sure I didn't miss any. Based on timing, would you say it's better to aim for the outside evidence point or the evidence point? It just depends. I mean, what do you mean the evidence point? The whole essay is evidence. Do you mean magic? Do you mean the outside evidence or magic point? Because I would definitely say go for outside evidence over the magic point because the likelihood that you're going to get the magic point anyway is slim to none. But you always, you know, if you have actually, if you have time at the end, try it, throw a magic point in there. That's what I would do. I would write my whole essay. And then if I have five more minutes, go back in and add a paragraph to like qualify my argument, connect to another period, blah, 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 blah. But the you know the likelihood that they take your outside evidence points, and you can get two outside evidence points, not just you only get one magic point point. You get two outside evidence points. So I would definitely try for the outside evidence one because I think they're more likely to give you that point than the magic point. Let the magic point be your last thought. If you don't even get to it, you don't even get to it. I mean, if you get nine out of ten, that's awesome. If you get if you try for the magic point and you don't get it, and you didn't do your outside evidence because you were trying for that, now you have a 7 out of 10. Still really good, but not quite as good. Um, so anyway, there's that. All right, now I'm going to get into um, – uh, Allie, I'm seeing your message. Yes, that's totally fine. Um, that's what I meant. Do we need a conclusion? You don't. There's nothing in the rubric that says you have to have a conclusion. We recommend a conclusion because you can restate your thesis, and um, if and your thesis has to be in the opening or the closing. Um, that's why we recommend that you put it in both because if the reader sees it, um, then yeah, like Kayla said, you could always put your thesis at the end of your magic point and make that a conclusion. But um, but you you need to put it in both just to make sure. And you could always even reword it. Like if you write your thesis and then write your whole essay and then think, God, my thesis isn't great. You can write a, you can write a different thesis, not a, not a totally different argument, but you can reword your thesis in the conclusion. And if that's stronger, they could give you the point for that one. Rewrite it or copy and paste it. What would you recommend? It just depends on time. If you're out of time, copy and paste it. If you have five minutes to rewrite it. All depends on time. As you guys have been practicing, how has the time been? Has it been terrible? Honestly, I think it, it, it might be better for some of you because I know some of you are slow writers. Plus, you don't have to. Um, it's easy to just like move the cursor and type more things in. So you can stressful, not bad. Okay, so it just depends. Honestly, I'm not shocked that Amber says it's stressful because Amber thinks everything is stressful. So, um, but Sanai saying it's not that bad makes me feel a little bit better. With the five minute submission frame, can we still work for an extra minute or two? No, nope. I've tried it and sometimes I felt rushed at the beginning, but I think I'll get used to it. I think you will too. I think you will too. Honestly, especially when the exam starts, you are going, your adrenaline is going to be pumping and you're going to, your fingers are going to be moving like a mile a minute. Um, 
I, 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 for real, like the stress you feel when you take the, uh, when you do the practices, that's just like you getting in your head. But like a, for most students, when you actually go to take the exam, it's like, holy crap, this is it. This is really happening. And you're like way more in the zone. Um, one thing I do recommend is read over your essay at least one time before you hit submit. If you like give yourself a lot, two minutes to read your essay and then hit submit. Typos are not the end of the world. Grammar issues are, they're not going to take points off, but if there's something that you see, like maybe you wrote Eisenhower when you meant to write Kennedy, that's a difference in a point. And so you'll, so going back and reading it helps. Um, like on the Vietnam War, I think I had someone say Korea when they meant to say Vietnam. So like, and you won't get the point if you say Korea, you need to make sure that all your stuff is right. Um, once the five minute thing pops up, yeah, you have to submit. Um, the only reason I went a little over is from correcting typos. Yeah, that's fine. So if you think I'll have time for that, I barely have time to write the whole thing. <laughs> if you don't have time to read it, that's totally fine. Um, if you just got to, you know, fingers going a mile a minute, whatever comes out, comes out, upload it. You did, you did your best. That's all I can ask. You did your best. Um, but please, by all means, whenever it's over, I want everyone to tell me what your question was and how you thought, you know, now that I'm asking for test and information college board, but they're going to, I'm sure it'll be on Twitter in about five minutes. Anyway, so I would love to hear how you feel you did on your exam whenever you're finished. Okay. Now I'm going to get into uh, the study guide. So today I'm going to go over periods six and seven. Um, okay. So starting with period six, this is the Gilded Age. Uh, what does the phrase the Gilded Age mean and who coined it? Remember Gilded is like gold. And so Mark Twain coined it in the book, The Gilded Age. And what he was referring to was, um, you know, something being golden on the outside, but empty and um, like unfulfilling on the inside. So, you know, like saying, oh, look at all our economic growth. Everything's money and glamour and wonderful during the Gilded Age. But like that economic growth is due to the mistreatment of immigrant employees and wage laborers and sharecroppers and all social. So that's the sort of like emptiness and unfulfilling stuff happening or even like cities, you know, we're seeing cities really expand all these immigrants, new technology, new innovation. Cities are amazing. But like, what if you live in a tenement that it's not so amazing? That's the inside of it all. So that's what he was referring to. Pendleton act. I think it was 1883. could be wrong about the year. Um, but president who signed it into law, Cleveland, you know, this Gilded Age presidents, you don't necessarily need to know that, but the purpose is um, it creates that civil service exam. Now, maybe it was Garfield. I'm, question, I'm, I'm questioning my cartoon president here. I'm not quite sure, but um, the purpose was to create that civil service exam and end the spoil system or the patronage system. Um, I'm sure you all are happy that I have another opportunity to say spoils. Um, Garfield, Caleb says we can go with whatever Caleb says. Um, explain populism and its key views and central figures. So populism, remember, is like the People's Party, the populist party. Um, their key views they supported bimetallism. They supported um, help for uh, factory workers. They supported um, increased education. They supported women's suffrage. Um, a bunch of stuff. Uh, central figures, though, uh, probably the most famous is William Jennings Bryan. Remember who uh, the cross of gold speech and he ran for president and then they were angry that he ran as a Democrat and they felt like they had been, you know, that he had sold them out. Um, so William Jennings Bryan, probably the most popular populist president. Um, explain the historical significance of Plessy v. Ferguson, separate but equal. Uh, the Views and work of the following reformers, Ida B. Wells, uh, African-American writer, and she wrote mostly about lynching, but all, you know, she wrote about a lot of issues that affected the black community in the South. Booker T. Washington, um, accommodation, accommodate segregation, focused on education instead. That's why he founded the Tuskegee Institute. Um, W.E.B. Du Bois said, no, demand equality immediately. Education is important, but segregation sucks. Um, 
Native Americans agreed to, or that was the um, the whole thing with Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull um, and General Custer when they killed Custer and all his guys, and then uh, Sitting Bull left and Crazy Horse got arrested and killed and um, so on and so on. So that was that whole thing. Um, the ghost dance movement is one of the reasons why um, the government was so worried about it, because the ghost dance movement was threatening to unite different native tribes. Um, and it was, you know, they thought they would do this dance and use the energy to like harness the spirits of their ancestors to like push back against uh, the American government. And they weren't worried about fighting ghosts. They were worried that multiple tribes would participate in this movement and that it would unite all of them against the U.S. government. It would have been a lot harder for them to do anything. So it was culminated with the Dawes Act or the general Dawes General Allotment Act, the Dawes Severalty Act is all the same thing. But um, the Dawes Act was where they started that like forced assimilation process where they started sending kids to those uh, boarding schools and they ended the reservation system, tried to make everyone farm, tried to stop everyone from being nomadic, um, kind of similar to when Eisenhower um, in the 50s tried to... All, like again ended the reservation system and tried to get people to move to the cities and in both cases it really did not work obviously um in the Dawes Act it was uh, you know intended to basically wipe away their culture in Eisenhower's case it was kind of just uh to say that they were doing something technology and innovation three new invention inventions and their inventors um light bulb telephone i mean not telephone We've had the telephone, wireless telegraph, um, electric streetcars. Do you think that if large cities and states fail to reopen because of Corona, it will lead to mass immigration to the Midwest states who do reopen? I don't. I don't think that only because, well, it depends on some things. Um, I don't think that because Midwest states don't have the, like, infrastructure to handle that ma amount of immigration in terms of jobs. That's the reason people migrate is not to like go get a haircut, but to like get a job to feed their family. And there are not necessarily more jobs going to be available to them in the Midwest at such a large number as there would be um, in the cities where they live now. Now, that being said, if um, major businesses, Amazon or someone decides to start moving to those states because they're reopening, then yes, I could see people following the jobs. I can't see people just like, Georgia's up and I'm moving to Georgia because I want to get a haircut. I can't see that happening. But I can see people saying like, this major business is moving, you know, like if Elon Musk moves uh, Tesla to Texas. I could see people, yeah, Caleb, you read my mind. Yes, I could see uh, people uh, moving to Texas to work for Tesla, but we don't know for sure if he's going to do that. Um, you know, he just he just tweets things, Elon. I mean, he named his kid a number. Like, do we do we trust this man? Who knows? Um, Tesla employees don't get a discount. Well, if that's the only reason you're working for Tesla, then I don't know. I wonder if SpaceX employees get a discount on rockets. That might be worth it. Um, impact of the Transcontinental Railroad. Obviously, it allows us. It Really, the impact is economic, right? Um, yeah, it helps with migration and travel and stuff. But the, the true impact is economic. Now, you in California have access to all the products that I can buy. And me living in the middle of nowhere in North Carolina, I have all of the same access to products that I could buy if I was living in Philadelphia or New York or Boston. And so this helps with, remember, this is when we start to see our um, like department stores. This is when Macy's opens. This is when we're seeing a lot of ads, a lot of commercialism, that conspicuous consumerism. You can start to buy things um, in installment payments money back guarantees that's happening during all of this um, industry and labor unions laissez-faire hands off they want the government out of economics and out of business uh, who are the knights of labor and what event became their downfall the knights of labor that was the union that was like everyone be in our union men women black white skilled unskilled be in our union and that's how they uh, got um, a reputation of having you know like communist socialist anarchists um, whatever is and the event that became their downfall was the 
Hey, Mark and Riot. Remember we watched The Drunk History on that one. The guy that, um, I think his name is Kyle something. The guy that does that Drunk History, he throws up during it. Or falls out of the chair. He's done more than one. And one he throws up and one he falls out of the chair. Um, explain the difference between an industrial union and a trades union. An industrial union is like anyone who works in an industry. So like if you work for a factory, you can be in an industrial union. But a trades union, you have to practice a specific trade. So um, whether it be like you are a licensed hairdresser, that's your trade. You can be in a hairdresser's union. Um, all right. Our four major tycoons here. Carnegie Steel. He's known for vertical integration. I had to remember the difference between vertical and horizontal for a second. Rockefeller, all he's known for, horizontal integration. Remember, vertical is buying out your suppliers. Um, this is, in my mind, a Pac-Man eating the supplies. <laughs> he, uh, he buy out your suppliers. And horizontal, it's buying like businesses. I've been watching drug issues just for fun. It is really good. And honestly, there's so many episodes that don't have anything to do with our class that I can't show you that are still hilarious and super good, um, especially the, like the newer season. So 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, also, in case anyone missed all of the 9,000 social media posts. Oh, you just got your e-ticket. That's exciting and also scary at the same time. Um, in case you missed all the social media posts yesterday, the original recording of Hamilton with its original cast from Broadway, uh, which was supposed to be released in theaters in October, is going to be released on Disney Plus on July the 3rd. So by all means, if you watch that, um, you know, let me know. I will obviously be watching it on July the 3rd. I'll probably stay up all night until they put it up, which is usually around 3 a.m. Um, and then I'll watch it. Don't be nervous. Everything's going to be fine. I'm, I'm not falling for it. I'm not, I'm not going to keep looking at my phone. JP Morgan, banking. He's known for investing in, in inventors. For example, Morgan paid for Menlo Park and Edison's um, whole thing. No, Allie, no. Our Riverdale, no. That's out of control, that show. Uh, and Vanderbilt did steamboats and railroads. He did transportation, and he's known for uh, his like, shady business practices and stuff. Um, remember, this is our Robert Barron versus Captain of Industry argument, which is, you know, all a matter of opinion. It'd be interesting if they asked a question about this. I don't think that they would, but it'd be interesting. Um, all right, in the 1890s, one half all immigrants in the US were from Eastern and Southern Europe. East, our European immigrants were processed at Ellis Island. Asian immigrants were processed at Angel Island. Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 all but banned Chinese immigration because of, you know, racism. How did Jane Addams help immigrant families? She founded Hull House in Chicago, which was a settlement house to help immigrant uh, women and families, um, you know, make their transition, learn English, find a job, find a house, yada, yada, yada. Imperialism. This is one thing I can say without a doubt. They will not do a DBQ about because it was the DBQ two years ago. So um, you don't necessarily need to kill yourself. What was the first seven house? Hull house. H-U-L-L. -L, Hull house. Um, you don't have to kill yourself trying to memorize all the imperialism stuff. Absolutely, you can use imperialism as a connection. You might need to use it for context if they're asking you a question about um, American isolationism in World War II. Talking about imperialism and lack of isolationism is certainly a, um, a good key for context. Um, but as far as a bunch of documents about imperialism, we know that that's not going to happen. So imperialism is expanding your country's power and influence through diplomacy or military force. Um, a few events here. I'm not going to remember all these dates off the top of my head. So don't expect that to happen, but I can give you the rest. Um, annexation of why? Why do we do it? Because of money, right? to protect our sugarcane uh, and sugar farmers in Hawaii. And what we do is we overthrow Queen. We put Queen Lilukalani in place. And then when she didn't do what we wanted her to do, when she wasn't our puppet, we got rid of her and we made Hawaii a protectorate and then a territory and then a state. Um, effects is where it's like the first time that we like aggressively add, you know, I don't want to say the first time because, you know, Americans are going to war. Um, but I guess other than that, it's since then, it's like the first time that we, it's a, sort of the beginning of imperialism for us. Um, Spanish-American War, that was 1898 causes. 
really us looking for an excuse to get into war, jingoism, imperialism, or causes, but yellow journalism, the explosion of the main, the Delome letter, all that stuff, details, uh, things you should know, the Rough Riders, um, splendid little war, all that jazz. Effects, we will gain three territories, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines, um, and it will also give us a new in in Cuba. Uh, American-Filipino War, 1899 to 1903, I believe, um, cause the Philippines don't want us and we want them. Um, details, Doug, not Douglas, that's the World War II. Arthur MacArthur, who was like, blow them up, concentration camps, no mercy. And then William Howard Taft, who was like, hey, but if you don't want to be blown up or put in a concentration camp, I'll give, you know, you work with me, I'll work with you, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Um, effects, America wins, um, and they'll hold the Philippines for 50 more years-ish. Um, Platt Amendment, that was the amendment to the, oh, sorry, to the help that we were giving Cuba, which basically said that in exchange for helping them start their new country, we get to treat them like a puppet. We get to interfere in their government whenever we want. We get to interfere in their economy whenever we want. They're not allowed to make treaties with any other nations without our blessing. And they have to give us land for a naval base, which is now Guantanamo Bay. Uh, open door policy written by John Hay. That was the uh, open trading policy with China. Uh, Russo-Japanese War. Um, J I almost said J Yeah. Let me start over. There is a war between Russia and Japan, and we are going to do by we, I mean Roosevelt is going to negotiate a peace treaty um, to make us look good, the Treaty of Portsmouth, and um, or the Portsmouth Treaty, I don't know, something like that. And um, the after that is when we make the gentleman's agreement with um, Japan, where we agree to be less racist, and they agree to stop sending us uh, immigrants to be racist too. Um, that's when they were in hot tub, right? Yes. In my mind, that's how I picture it, that they were like hot tub, kiki drinks. Let's make a treaty at our mountain house in New Hampshire. <laughs> um, Panama canal. Mm, something I feel. Oh, no, I skipped the Roosevelt corollary. That was where we were like, no one talked to Latin America. If you have issues with Latin America, like they owe you money, let us know and we'll be your debt collector. And Europe was like, okay, cool. Now I have to do less work. And Latin America was like, no, this isn't your business. And we were like, when does that ever stop us? Um, Panama Canal. We fight this, uh, you know, revolution for Panama to get help them get their independence from the Colombians because Colombia wouldn't let us have the canal zone. So we get Panama their independence from Colombia so that they can give us access to the canal zone. We spend 10 years, wasn't it both of the Americas? Well, kind of, because Monroe was already North America. So this is just kind of like adding the Americas, Latin and South. Yeah, 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 pretty much. But isn't Latin America? Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to get into the is Latin America, North America, or South America debate. Um, so we construct the Panama Canal for 10 years. It cuts hundreds of miles off the coast from East Coast to West or off the trip from East Coast to West Coast. OK, cool. OK. Um, and. Um, it just helped with transportation and we'll make a ridiculous amount of money off of it because obviously we're not the only ones who are trying to send ships back and forth. Plenty of other nations are as well. And we'll be able to collect money off of that um, until Jimmy Carter just decides to give it back for no reason. Dollar diplomacy. That was William Howard Taft. It's kind of like uh, diplomacy through economics. We're going to give away money loans and in return, people will like, owe us. We're like bringing people under our, into our bubble by, you know, offering them money like a stranger with a van offering you candy. That's like America and money. Um, and honestly to those poor countries and to the kids on the streets, don't take it. Um, all right. Uh, progressivism. There's another thing I can say that, um, we probably won't be asked on cause that was the question last year. Um, but once again, it could be a context. It could be a uh, magic point material. So it's definitely important to review, but don't, kill yourself to memorize every progressive era person and what they did. 
Um, Cause that was the question last year. Muckrakers. Those were our journalists who were showing us how bad things were like Jacob Reese and how the other half lives or Ida Tarbell in um, the history of standard oil politics and government. We start using new uh, things like initiatives, referendums, recalls. Um, plus you can just look them up. Right. Exactly. If you can't remember who wrote something, just Google it. I will, I will say, be careful what you click on. Um, if you are Googling something, don't accidentally click on something that's going to take you to a forum, like even Reddit. No. Um, I don't know why you would go to Reddit for your historical information anyway, but be careful what you click on. Only click on like, um, you know, like Wikipedia. That's fine. Um, and nine times out of ten, it's right. Um, but be careful what you click on because if you accidentally click on a forum, College Board's probably going to be like, you're a cheater. So initiative referendums, recalls, Robert LaFollette, Finding Bob and his, you know, glamorous, you know, photos uh, brought us all of those changes, putting more power back in the hands of the people, health, um, cleaning up the tenements and also um, what's the word I'm looking for? Prohibition, uh, education, um, not John Dewey, Horace Mann. I'm not saying horse man. I'm saying Horace. Horace Man, A C E, Horace Man. So he's the one who was like, social studies, we need social studies. Uh, was George Waring important? Did you spell that right? Or are you trying to say Washington? George Waring. No. No. And I'm not going to say that anyone's not important because they like to use documents written by obs obscure people that are about regular who started to scrub the streets. Oh yeah. The guy that looked like Mr. Clean. Um, I mean, yes, in terms of, like I said, cleaning up the tenements, <clears throat> that's him. And if you remember his name and you need to talk about cleaning up tenements, throw that out there. Um, but you know, that's not necessarily like a major thing that you have to make sure you include. Um, but yeah, Horace Mann was like social studies. So you can thank him for this moment in your lives. Civil rights. This is the where W.B. Du Bois hosts the um, Niagara Conference and begins the Niagara Movement. Uh, women's rights. Uh, this is when um, Susan B. Anthony like gets herself arrested 67,000 times um, for suffrage. And then after her and Elizabeth Cady Stanton die, new wave. And that's when we've got Alice Paul, Carrie Chapman Cat, um, Alice Paul's... Um, hunger strike that's definitely something you should be able to regurgitate because of um watching that movie iron drawn angels our girl alice um industry uh you know safety regulations osha doesn't exist yet that's not going to exist till the 70s nixon creates osha but we still have more safety regulations um you know workers compensation things like that because of the triangle shirtwaist factory fire and conservation make sure you know the difference between conservation and preservation um not the same thing remember conservation's like we save it and we use it to our advantage. Preservation's like, we don't touch it at all. We let it be. Um, and John Muir was kind of like a preservationist and uh, Roosevelt was like a conservationist. Um, all right. World War One. The five causes. The word we use to remember mania, right? M, militarism. A, alliances. N, nationalism. I, imperialism, last A, assassination, RIP Franz Ferdinand. Two reasons we enter the war. Unrestricted submarine warfare, the Lusitania crisis, the Sus breaking of the Sussex Pledge, all of that. And also um, Zimmerman, the Zimmerman Telegraph. Uh, them, Germany trying to like coax uh, Mexico into attacking us. You know, conspiracy, is it true, is it not true, doesn't matter. That's the reason we say we went into the war, but probably the really out of those two, probably the biggest reason we really won the war was the submarine warfare. Um, three new types of technology or strategy used during world war one. Um, we've got tanks. They're not great, but we've got them. Um, airplanes, obviously uh, poison gas is a big one. Trench warfare is going to be like the number one strategy. Um, can I go over mania one more time? Just the acronym. Yes. M militarism, a alliances, in nationalism, I, imperialism, last A, assassination. Um, how did the federal government violate the Constitution during World War One? and what Supreme Court case of outlaw? The uh, Sedition Acts and the Espionage Acts and uh, the Supreme Court 
that case that upheld it was Shank v. U.S., which said, um, you know, if the government's got to um, suspend your civil liberties during a time of war, then that's what they've got to do. The 14 points were um, Wilson's peace plan for peace without victory, spreading democracy and growing world markets and all that jazz. And everyone was like, bro, no, revenge. And the one thing they did like uh, was the League of Nations, which is the one thing America doesn't like, so we don't join. Uh, the 20s, xenophobia, fear of foreigners, effects of xenophobia, Palmer raids, uh, quota laws, the KKK, um, all of that. Sacco and Vanzetti um, were the two Italian anarchists who were executed for like murdering the clerk and robbing the shoe store, even though we know now that they did not do it and they were falsely accused and convicted. What well, court case was the was an effect of the new rise in Christian fundamentalism, the Scopes trial, the monkey trial. Um, Great Migration, that was where uh, African Americans began to leave the South and move to cities in the, um, you know, there are multiple waves. Um, first, it was moving to like the Northeast, then it was people moving to the West, Midwest, and then it was people moving to the West Coast. Um, aspects of the Harlem Renaissance, literature, music, um, civil rights, back to Africa, nationalism, um, choreography, fashion, all those things. Charles Lindbergh, he's the guy that flew across the Atlantic nonstop. And we know his Lind the Lindbergh baby. I said his Lindbergh baby. Yeah, I guess the Lindbergh baby was his. But the, the kidnapping and the murder of the Lindbergh baby. Um, Henry Ford, obviously owner and creator of Ford Automobiles. Um, he did not invent the car. That was invented by Carl Benz. But Henry Ford did make the car affordable. He made the car a, like a mainstream product and not just like a luxury item, even though I guess, yeah, a car is still a luxury item. But um, honestly, a car is harder to afford now than it was when Henry Ford was pumping them out. Um, he also, you know, paid his um, employees more. He worked them less. They got weekends off, all that jazz. Al Capone, bootlegger and arrested major mob leader, died of syphilis. Can't really see you needing to say that on your DBQ, but you know, there it is. What was Harding's campaign slogan? Slow, slogan? That's not even a word. Uh, slogan Return to normalcy. A return to normalcy. He wanted to get America back to normal, meaning like, let's get back to what we were doing before the war. Who are the Ohio gang? Those were those politicians and businessmen who uh, came with Harding to Washington and used him to get government appointments and then to use those government appointments to like commit crimes and embezzle money. And that's what they were known for. Um, like teapot dome. That was a, uh, Ohio gang thing. How did the U S attempt to prevent more global conflict after world war one? Two things you could say here, the, um, Kellogg brand pact, which was like us outlawing war or the Washington Naval Disarmament Conference, where we uh, reduce the size of our Navy and a, a bunch of other countries agreed to reduce the size of their navies. Uh, Great Depression causes, okay? Um, causes would be, a dip, you know, you have that graphic organizer uh, that went through causes and effects, so that's another good thing to look at here. But um, it, it de just depends on what aspects of the depression you're looking at. If you're looking at... Um, Farmers and their, you know, causes of what was going on there, that would be the drop in um, demand after World War II or the overproduction, I mean, World War One, or the overproduction during World War One. If you're looking at the stock market, one of the causes of the, that crash was that we were relying too much on speculation, over speculation. We're definitely across the board buying too many things on credit. Um, we have created this atmosphere of like deregulation where businesses and banks are able to like do whatever they want. Um, and banks have been lending out more money than they knew what to do with. And then once the depression happened and we had all these bank runs or not that the depression happened, but once the market crashed, um, all these bank runs turned that into like a, a major depression, um, effects, mass homelessness, unemployment reaches 25% the end of Hoover's political career, um, the new deal, you could consider an effect, um, an increase in government power being an effect of the new deal. Um, all that jazz, what conditions create the dust bowl, high winds, uh, over farming, creating that loose topsoil and drought. 
How did Hoover respond to the depression? First, don't do anything. Second, help each other, volunteerism. Third, localism, fix it at home. Um, and then finally, the RFC, the Reconstruction Finance Corp. But by then, a ship had sailed, Hoover. Uh, what was the bonus army? These were the World War I vets who uh, were like, give us our bonuses. And Hoover was like, no. And so they stormed into Washington and he had them tear gassed. And how did it affect Hoover? It killed any like any possibility of him ever getting, a, you know, elected for a second term. Um, all right. FDR, his fireside chats up where he would get on the radio and be like, here's what we're doing. Here's what's going on. Know that I'm with you. Um, here's what our current plan is. Here's the situation. And it just made people feel like connected and like someone was. It's kind of like um, right now in New York where the coronavirus is the worst every day. Uh, the governor of New York. Governor Cuomo does a live press conference every day, updating people. What are the current number of cases? What's the current number of deaths? How are we on PPE? Uh, what's our plan moving forward? And things like that. And it just makes people feel like, okay, at least they're paying attention. And kind of like Trump, he's been doing a coronavirus thing every day. It makes people feel like, okay, someone's at least working on this, whether or not New Yorkers think he's doing a good job, whether or not Americans think Trump's doing a good job. At least people know that like they're not ignoring it, which is kind of what Hoover had been doing was ignoring it. And so Roosevelt's showing that he's not the three R's recovery really perform. Um, the first new deal and the second new deal, the CCC, they did um, the, it was like a jobs program. And they did like conservation. It's literally in the title. They did conservation, fighting wildfires and things like that, building aqueducts. Um, TVA, they built dams to provide hydroelectric power to people in rural areas in the Tennessee Valley. FDIC insures your money if your bank fails. Uh, the SEC now investigates and uh I don't, I overlooks, I guess is the best word, the stock market, uh, works progress administration, major, uh, jobs program as well. Um, they're the ones that did the, um, hiring of the, uh, musicians to go on tour and hired the artists to do the post office murals and hired the writers to record the slave narratives. That was the WPA rural electric electrification administration. Exactly what it sounds providing electricity to people in rural areas and the SSA, which was creating social security. Uh, overall effects of the new deal um, significantly increases government power in a, in a way that we've never seen it before. Um, it also temporarily sort of tides us over in the depression until we can get to our real solution, which is going to be World War II. Not that we knew it was coming, but nevertheless, it will end up fixing our problems. Um, <clears throat> I guess you could also say... Um, more opportunities. It creates a new deal coalition, which is like a new voting base um, for people that are going to uh, kind of leave Republicans and go over to vote for uh, Roosevelt four times. Um, <clears throat> more opportunities for African Americans and Native Americans. He created the Black Cabinet of Advisors. He created the Indian New Deal. More opportunities for women, Eleanor, Francis Perkins, all those people. Um, what conditions and circumstances in Europe led to, led to a rise in totalitarianism? The, the depression, really, you know, there being such a, a low in places like Germany after the World War II. And then on top of that, when we had the depression in the 30s, it was like low, low, low. And um, people were desperate, hungry, ashamed of their culture and country after the war. Um, and anyone offering a solution was, you know, someone to possibly listen to. Um, how do we violate our own neutrality during the war? Oh my gosh, how do we not? Cash and carry, lend lease, Atlantic charter, funneling we weapons through Iceland, unrestricted submarine warfare against the Germans, all those are ways. The production miracle was when we ended the depression. And once we start producing all these war goods, um, we meet our production goals every year and we're producing more war materials than all the Axis countries combined. Minorities in World War II, African Americans, um, we know that uh, <clears throat> they fought in segregated units. Um, we talked about the um, the Red Tails doing uh, the bomber escorts, um, and then also the Black Panther tank unit in World War II. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should mention. 
Mm -mm. Uh, women working at home. Wait, what did Holly, Holly Smith? That's funny. I'm going to type the actual spelling just for the record. Holly Smoot. Um, but uh, Holly Smoot, which was the tariff that we raised, which basically like right when the depression or when the market crashed, we were like, we need people to invest in American businesses to help the, the businesses that are losing money because the market has crashed. So kind of like cut trade off. Like now you can't buy foreign products because they're being priced so high. The tariff is so high. Um, and all that did was hurt every other country that had been, it didn't, it wasn't nearly enough to help us from, you know, falling off a cliff that we had already jumped off, but it also hurt all these other countries and it made them see, a, a like if they were already struggling, Holly Smoot just like made it 10,000 times worse. So it made it this global depression. Bad move, Hoover. Um, women are working at home. Rosie the Riveter. We've also got women way more involved in the war than we've ever seen in wars previous, like the WAX and the WASPs, um, the Army Nurse Corps. We've got women in baseball, the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, um, Native Americans, the Navajo Code Talkers. Is World War One just not as important at all? They're the same war. Can't talk about one without talking about the other. Um, World War One is just like, I mean, it's the same. We're fighting the same people. We try to be isolated in the beginning. And then after a direct threat or attack on us, then we get involved. They're pretty much the same thing. So um, really the only major differences are like some pieces of technology and um, that we have Russia in World War II when we didn't, we weren't working with Russia in World War I because they tapped out before we got in. <laughs> Those are pretty much the only differences. Um, like we didn't need to know any battles or anything for World War One. Yeah, they're not they're not gonna ask you if you mean for the exam, they're not gonna ask you battles. Um, the only like for the reason why I've got battles here on your study guide is because uh like midway is a turning point, Stalingrad, you really don't need to know. I just personally see it as important to knowledge of the war overall, which is why it's on the study guide. And uh Pearl Harbor. Uh, for obvious reasons, that's the Pearl Harbor is our Zimmerman telegraph, right? That's going to be the direct threat that gets us in. Um, and then D-Day. Plus, I mean, and I guess that's true. When I say World War One and Two are the same thing, they are the same thing. But World War Two is like bigger and more extravagant than ever before. Like it's 10 times the amount of people involved, 10 times the amount of casualties. Um it's a lot bigger. And so our, and we were in it for longer. So, um, so there's more important things to note, especially considering D-Day was like the largest land invasion of all time. Um, okay. Native Americans, Navajo code talkers, Japanese Americans, Japanese internment camps, um, and also fighting in the war themselves. Um, and then Mexican Americans, Bracero program, zoot suit riots, all that jazz battles. Pearl Harbor, Japan gets us, we get into the war. Midway, turning point after that island hopping campaign. Um, Stalingrad, turning point in Europe after that, Russia's moving in to liberate Europe. Operation Overlord, that's D Day. Um, and that is, you know, after D Day, there was like your bomb. And what gover intergovernmental organization was formed after World War II? That would be the UN, the United Nations. Um, so that's. 1945 that's the end of that period that is the end of what they could really ask you questions about because remember periods one and two and eight and nine they're not the question's not going to come from that it, th those periods are just going to be used for context or like magic point moments um the question will only come from periods three four five six or seven so all right so any last minute questions before I sign off tomorrow. Uh, remember, I had to move the stream from 10 to, I think I said 11. Let me double check what I said in the remind. Um, yeah, to 11 because um, my brother's Air Force graduation is tomorrow at 10. And I have to watch it on live stream with my, my family. So I won't be able to do that. I don't need all those things. So 11. I'll be back on. Um, and then I'll talk, I'll be grading your, um, your, I'll finish the last feedback for your conservatism DBQ. Um, after I do that, get your, um, 
what role of women in America DBQ done? Remember to keep yourself at 45 minutes. Is it that's your last practice? Um, if you ha need like clarification on something, feel free to text me um, or email me. Or if you need to call me, that's fine. Just text me and we'll we'll set up a time for a call. I was talking to Amber and I just want to make sure I didn't give her wrong information. You should use the major events for contextualization since they're easy to relate to the prompt. Yes, that is correct. Yep, Caleb, you are right. Um, let me try to remember if there's anything else. Don't forget that your crash course videos are also due tomorrow. Your role of women in uh, America DBQ is due today at five. Um, everyone's feedback, it's 11 now. Everyone's feedback will be online before one. So you still have, even if you're the last person, um, you'll still have plenty of time to use that feedback. But if you um, if you felt really good about your first one, um, then you can go ahead and start on that other one. You don't necessarily need to like wait for, for feedback if you don't feel like you need to, but I am going to give it to you. I know, I know, I know you're nervous. This is a weird situation. Um, uh, but remember at the end of the day, if you get it, awesome. If you don't, not the end of the world, not the end of the world. And I know some of you are like to my parents, it's going to be the end of the world for like five minutes. But by the time you even get your score, it's going to be July. They're going to have, there are going to be other things on their mind by then. Um, there's just one more class you'll have to take in college. So it would be nice if you didn't have to, but we got our grades in the mail, but they weren't adjusted for the work that we did. Is that how it should be? I have no idea what you mean. I have no idea what you mean, Caleb. You haven't gotten grades for this quarter because they're not done. So do you mean your report? You got your quarter three report card? Oh yeah, that was just for quarter three. So that was the that was the grade you got forever ago in March when we ended for when we came back from spring break. Yeah, that's your quarter three grade that is adjusted for the work. That's that. That's your grade. Quarter four grade is this whole weird add points thing that they're making up. All right. It just seemed late, so I want to make sure. Oh, you just, you mean you like just more recently got it. Oh, okay. That's weird because I thought we sent them a while ago. But if you just got it, yes, no, you're right. That's just a late delivery of your report card. So we will get a separate one. Yeah, you'll get a new report card um, with your like new full grade on it. Um, and it'll either say PC19 or it'll say your grade grade, depending on what you choose um, after you talk with Ms. Horton, how all this works out. But remember... Before you talk to Ms. Horton, you'll have, you'll see in power school, like a, or maybe even on your report card. I don't know when they're going to send out report cards, but you'll see like a default grade. Um, and, uh, but remember that whatever, like whatever you see isn't real until you've talked to Ms. Horton and you've decided I want to take the pass or I want to take the letter grade. Most of you, I don't know, you know, for this class at least, um, will want to take the letter grade because you guys have been doing really good. Why wouldn't you want uh, an A or a B in an AP class to boost that GPA? All right. Good luck today. Study. Watch some drunk history. Watch your crash course crash course videos. Um, so we'll talk to Ms. Horton after the exam. Yes, ma'am. You will talk to Ms. Horton after the exam. I don't know how long it's going to take her to conference with every single junior. It could take a week. It could take more. Um, but nothing's official until you've talked to her. So until you talk to her, don't worry about it. Um, all right. Uh, hit me up if you've got any questions about anything moving forward. Get some work done today. I will see you guys tomorrow at 11.